Good morning, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. I'm Angela Wolf, and we are at your side virtually today. I'm a Brother Brand Ambassador, and we are streaming live on Brother Sews and Brother Crafting Facebook and YouTube channel, and I can see all of your comments from all of the streams. So be sure to say hi, say where you're from. If you've never been here before, this is a great group of people that we join twice a week. So today, we are crafting with May, and wait to see what she's got on hand. I can see you all rolling in. I don't see any issues with uh, volume. So let's go. Hi, May. How are Hi. you? Nice to see you. You too. We're getting into this nice, warm spring weather. I know. I Can you believe it's May already? I just went this last weekend to visit my mother for a few days, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's May. Although it's like 30 degrees here. You wouldn't know it. But it's still, it's May. That means summer's coming. <laughs> and we're almost to the halfway point even. It went really fast. It sure did. So what are you doing today? Everybody's rolling in and saying hi to you. And I know you're going to have something fabulous on the scan and cut for us. So today what I'm going to do, this is something I've been doing for some of my own projects lately. And so I thought I would share it with everybody here because it's super easy to do. Um, we don't all have the know-how to get on the computer and create our own cut files or take a cut file and customize it on the computer. It's doable. It's very doable. But maybe you don't have the time or maybe it frustrates you or maybe it just takes the fun out of it or maybe you don't know how and aren't ready yet. So I'm going to show you how I can do that just using the scan and cut and some paper. And then we're going to end up making a heat transfer vinyl zipper pouch. Oh, now that sounds cool. All it right. is. Heat transfer vinyl zipper pouch. That is something I need because I tell you, I'm organizing. I've been organizing. I had my two uh, groups come in for my in-person classes and I'm trying to keep everything organized. So when my next class comes, I can pull it out quickly and easily. I think this sounds like a great option. <laughs> Yes. Oh, definitely. And I have a lot of vinyl, either rolls or scraps or different bits and pieces. So I'm always trying to find projects. It's so funny because I always say I'm going to use it up and then I end up buying more because I have so much fun with it. So we're never <laughs> going to use it all up, but we can do lots of fun things with it. And heat transfer vinyl is pretty simple as well. It's not, it's not super hard. It's pretty, and it's really easy to cut, which makes it really nice. It's really easy on your mats and easy to cut, which makes it, I think, even more fun because you know you're going to get a great project. That sounds awesome. So uh, some of the girls were here this last few weeks and they were, uh, we did a um, proud member of the Wolfpack all with the scan and cut and we were trying to weed all the itsy bitsy letters and and your name came up because everyone said i cannot believe how quickly and easily you make it look and we're all like mm -mm. <laughs> i think it takes a little bit of a talent there too by the way <laughs> you know it's more just that the more you do it the more you get the feel for it and the more the the faster it becomes it is it is a slow it is a slow process generally speaking usually in my videos there's a reason why you'll see like 10 seconds of weeding and then we bloop and, all, and it's all weeded and we're on to the next because uh, yep. it does take, it does take a bit of time but it really is good lighting and then just keep at it and it does get faster okay did you hear that, Wolfpack? <laughs> it gets faster and easier. Although the tools help, the little weeding tools. The, the little like tools, that. yes, the tools definitely help. All right, well, take it away, May. Okay, so we're gonna start with, this is a freshly cleaned mat. And if you're wondering how you clean your mat, you just take like a little baby wipe, not, no alcohol, and you're just going to, I like to go from center to out, but you're just going to just kind of move if there's, I had a lot of paper dust and a little bit of pet hair stuck to my mat here because this particular mat did not get put away properly with the dust shield on it. So it's just been sitting out here open with no cover because you have to let it dry. So you have to let that water evaporate off and looking at it, it's all done now. So we're ready to go. And this is a low tack mat, but it doesn't have to be any standard mat or low tack mat will work fine. And you can use any color of paper for this, but I do recommend paper just because it's an easy, inexpensive material. And I also do recommend that um, you use a color you have extra of, but you also want to make sure you've got a color that is going to have enough contrast against, um, I'm going to use printer paper or a white background, but you're looking for contrast. So well, there's two different ways to do it, and I'll show you the two different ways. But you're wanting something that you're going to be able to get, because what we're going to do essentially is, 
cut our design out and then alter it and then scan it back in to make a new design off of our new paper. So we just wanna keep in mind that we're going to be, whatever we cut out initially, we're going to then later scan. So we just like, we don't want patterns or we don't want like things that would confuse the machine and it wouldn't read well. We wouldn't want white on white. That wouldn't work very well. So you just wanna kind of think about that before we get going. So the first part is very, very easy. We're just gonna go and pick any pattern at all. I actually have a, I wanna pick a heart because I keep trying to make this happen and it wasn't working. And actually about a week ago, I had the idea that this would work if I only did it this way. And I went, you know what, I'm gonna save that and we're gonna do it on the show because that'll be perfect. So I'm picking a heart and I'm sizing it to five inches or six inches. It really, this part doesn't matter so much. You just want it big enough to work with. Okay. Okay, so this is the first part is we're just cutting out the shape and it doesn't have to be a basic shape. It could be a very intricate shape. That part doesn't matter so much. It's just whatever the pattern is that you're trying to alter or that you're wanting to do something with. That's what you're cutting out. And in this case, for me, it's a heart. And I can hear it going. So, May, while you're cutting that heart out, speaking of hearts, everyone wants to know if you made your shirt. <laughs> Oh, this shirt? No, no, I did not. Oop. So all of you I, elbowed, I elbowed my scanning cut while it was cutting. So if that happened, so I accidentally, it was turning around, I went whoop and moved the paper. Um, that's the fun of live, right? So if that <laughs> happens, it's not a big deal. I just moved my heart somewhere else on the, on the paper that I knew would be fine. And recut it. And since it's a super simple, easy, you know, what, 20 second cut, I'm not worried about it. It'll be just fine. <laughs> and I but promise, be careful with your body parts. To this time there. <laughs> well, we won't, we won't bug you this time. But oh, no, that's like, I just turned. I turned and I, I <laughs> lifted the paper, which obviously you don't want to do that. <laughs> and But, you know, it gets hard sometimes. This isn't usually my setup. Usually I work elsewhere okay so now we have our heart Ooh. and i'll show you what happened it's actually not that big a deal and actually i won't toss it because i can probably but i went pop and i popped this part up so it didn't <laughs> finish cutting that's uh, okay all right so our next part i'm gonna move the machine out of the way here so our next part is we're trying to alter something now it depends on how you're trying to alter whatever it is your cut file is. If you're trying to, um, like for example, let's say you had a pattern that you wanted, like maybe you had a leaf and you wish it had less leaves. You could cut those extra leaves off and then scan it and have a new pattern that had the amount of leaves you wanted. Or if you wanted to combine two things, there's a lot of different ways we can play with the scanning cut. And what I am going to do, let's see here. Find my ruler and we'll find, okay, so I'm gonna get my ruler here. So I'm gonna put a spot. So I have this vision in my head and this will be the backside. So none of this will be seen. And you're not gonna see very much as far as me doodling. Um, it's going to be very faint because I'm on black cardstock, but I have a vision of having a heart in one spot and having like a, a sunburst of all different colors all the way around. But I haven't found a cut file that does exactly what I want. And I have a very specific vision here. So what I'm going to do is decide how many colors I want. I'm using the ruler so that I keep going back to the same point. So that when I'm doing this, I'm not having all of the different points go to different areas or different spots. And this will make more sense. Let's see, do we want right down the middle? I don't think so. We're gonna go slightly off. And you can do as many as many pieces as you want. Let's see, one, two, three, four. That gives me five pieces. I think that's enough. So now what I'll do is take scissors 
And depending on what you want to do here, so how I cut into the middle, if I want it to be really precise in the middle, then I would take more care. However, I intend to layer a different piece or color over the top. So we're just going to cut each piece. And I'm going to keep them in order because I would prefer that I would prefer to know where the pieces go. Okay. There we go. <laughs> so Kaylee says May and her creative mind at work. <laughs> well, the thing I like about this is I'm a very visual person. So sometimes I have trouble visualizing what I'm trying to do inside the the digital or inside the computer program. So if I can do it like this, you see how you can see what my, I'm starting to see my idea come to life here. So if, oh my there, was any, if there was anything I didn't like, I would be able to change it here. And I would just have to take my scissors and just physically change if there's any little bits that I think I don't like or any parts that I'm not a fan of, or if I wanted to cut more pieces, I can cut more pieces, but it, it makes it so that I can just visually see it. And you can do, well, you can do absolutely any, any form that you would like. As far as shape, you can also, you could add different, you know, if you wanted to add pen work, if you wanted to add whatever it is you wanted to add, you could add it here. So now I'm just taping it in place. And the reason I'm taping it in place is to, wait, what did I do here? Oh, that's right. It's like a puzzle. I'm taping it in place so that I can scan it, so that I can make a cut file. And then by doing it this way and having a cut file, I'm gonna be able to make as many of these as I want because it'll be saved and it'll be, a, a, be all set as a cut file. But you can see why I said you want to make sure that whatever color you pick, that it doesn't clash with whatever it is that you're doing. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. I love that. So my vision is we'll have a second little heart that covers this area mm -hmm. or maybe a button or I don't know. But we'll have something that covers this area. But for now, and if you're wondering, like, okay, well, why could I could have put just put my vinyl in there and cut all whole hearts out of my whole vinyl and then cut it up, cut all the different pieces apart. The problem is it would be really difficult to get them all even and to get them all actually to fit correctly together. If I do this, I have no waste because I can cut, as I'm about to show you, we can cut all the specific vinyl pieces out of all the little bits. So now, now the magic starts to come together. And if you don't worry about the spaces in here, because this isn't going to be what you cut, you're going to cut vinyl. So you can always move the vinyl. You could make more space here or less space. It actually is quite flexible there. All right, so we're gonna load back up. And then we're gonna to go to the home screen. We're gonna to go to scan. So remember that direct cut is, I wanna cut what's on the mat. Scan to cut is, I wanna create a cut file. That's, that's how I always flip back and forth in my mind. Here it goes. It's so quiet. It is. Hey, Chris. Chris says she loves the show. Thanks so much. And by the way, Chris, I I did put that the scan and cut was being used in this, and I'll start trying to put the machines. But sometimes these can be applicable to other things. But for the scan and cut, I make sure that I put that in there so you'll know. And I also put May's name in the description so you'll know. So I'll, I'll be more careful with that, Chris. She says, I want more descriptions so I know if I have this machine. So if you have any scan and cut DX, any of the models, Almost always, the only exception is if we're using one of the Disney files that's exclusive to that machine. Anything that I ever do, though, you can do on any of the models, which is fun. So nobody, nobody's getting left out. So now it's wanting to know, do I want to do, we don't want in and out because there is no in and out. We're just doing outlines. 
And you can see that it's picking up little scratches on the map. And that's fine. We're not going to worry about that. We're just going to go like so. And it does look like it didn't pick up this one piece, which is curious. I'm going to see if I can make it. So we're going to go before I rescan it. I think the piece, I think it just kind of lifted off there or something. So before I do anything else, I'm going to see if bumping up how dark or how light it recognizes. Sometimes that's all you need to do. So That's a good tip to try that first before you scan it back. Yeah, in. before I go to rescan it, and sometimes it does just need. Oh, do you see that? It picked it up. Yay! So sometimes that really is all it takes is you telling it, "Hey, um, maybe a little lighter or a little darker." There's another piece there, and so you can see it's got a cut file for all of our pieces. Okay. So. I mean, it's perfect. We don't have to worry about anything. So we're going to just say, okay. And we're going to, I'm going to save it to the machine because I don't have a USB drive in here right now. And I don't have, well, the computer's being used for other stuff. So we don't need to go to the computer. Okay. So it's saved. So now this is in the machine as a cut file, but the machine has it as five pieces. So the machine does have five different pieces ready to cut, ready to go. So now it gets really fun. And now we can get creating. And the first thing I'm gonna do here for this, once we've got it and now we're ready to go, is I just wanna make sure, so this is eight, this is eight by, oh, it's five and a half. So eight by five and a half. So I know I'm gonna to need to make my heart a little shorter to make it fit on here. And then, let's see. So then I'll turn my iron on that's over here because we definitely want to have the iron hot and ready. Okay, and then I'm gonna push the home button on the scan and cut so that we can get to our pattern. So we're gonna retrieve data and it's in the machine. And there it is. All right, there it is. So the first thing we're gonna do, so we can move all the different pieces independently, which is about to become important. But before we do, we know that this is too tall. So I'm going to select everybody. And what that's gonna do is allow me to go into edit. And we cannot weld it. There are no overlapping parts, so there's nothing to weld. What we want is unify. And all that unify does is tell the machine, please treat all of these pieces as one, so I can move it around, but also, oh yes, yeah, see it's six, so it's much too tall. So we just need to make this smaller and I'm gonna make it five inches. There we go. So now it's five inches tall and I'm gonna press this button again. We'll pull the, we'll ununify that. And the reason we wanna do that is if we want to use, and then I went back in here and unselected, so now I can move the pieces apart. They're the correct sizes. They're the correct parts that we want, but now we can move them apart so that we can get different colors of vinyl. And you cut different colors of vinyl all at once. So I'm gonna go ahead and unload my mat, and I'm not gonna move my machine. I'm just gonna tilt it up like this for a moment so that I can see, and I can count the squares on the screen so I can get kind of an idea as far as how big or how small my vinyl pieces are. Now what I'm actually going to do though, I have two very different thicknesses of vinyl. I have my glitter vinyl, which is much thicker, and I have more traditional heat transfer vinyl, which is much thinner. And that's kind of an important notation to make because we're not going to want to cut them together. If we try to cut them together, then one is going to work well and one is not because it's going to be trying to go back and or it's trying to guess whichever the original thickness is that it starts cutting, that'll be the thickness that it tries to cut everything on. So when the, in that case, what you're going to need to do is just give yourself a moment here. We're just going to cut twice, not a big deal. So one, two, three, 
and then we'll cut some of this and I probably have more than I need and that's all right <laughs> okay so I have four different pieces here I'm just going to go ahead and put them down so we're putting them down the shiny side is up because that's actually the transfer material so we want that side down because the more matte finish side, that's the side that's you're looking at the iron reactive heat or the heat reactive side or the back side of the material. And that's the material part that you want cut. So I'm going to put my four pieces down and just make sure I like to make sure that it's really nice and stuck down there. No air bubbles or anything. Okay. So now that I have that, and it's always important, I think, I know I'm sure you do this too, Angela, it's always important when I'm making a project to kind of pause during the process and make sure not just that the project is going to go well, but also that I have kind of a, a good mental grasp on what it is, what it is I'm doing, but also how that's going to translate to the real world. So I'm going back into add. And I'm going to add, I'm going to make it small. I'm thinking about an inch. Close enough. So I'm just going to cut some extra hearts out. And that's just because why not? We already, we're going to have the space. We might as well. And then I can also go in here. Once I have a heart in here, I can go to object edit. And I can size things, but I can also add more. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we are going to click OK to get to this middle button here, which is the scanning button, is we want to scan the mat. So I just, uh, while you're doing that, Cindy says, do you have to mirror image or do you have to um, mirror the image? Well, first of all, the heart is symmetrical, so I would say no, but is it? So if you want it to be like this, yes, you would have had to do the mirror image. I don't care if the heart has, I don't care which side the heart ends up being, because it is off center. So it will end up being over here, but I don't mind which side it's on. But if you did mind, yes, you would. And to do that, what you would have done is while it was unified, while you were all unified, you would have just pushed this middle button right there and oh, yeah. that would have mirrored it. Great question, so, Cindy, because I was thinking, I was just thinking the outside heart. I forgot that it's all, you know, whatever. <laughs> great question, Cindy. It is. Okay, so now we can see we have lots of different pieces and parts. And I'm just going to move various hearts around. I love this scan feature because it means we can use smaller bits. And it means we can know where things are going to be. Let's get one of these guys. There we go. I can know where things are. I can see where the parts are and see what's working or what's what's not working. And I can move things around and then just kind of get it's just a little easier to get a hold of. Although sometimes sometimes the bigger pieces, will, they want to be selected. There we go. So I'm just moving little parts around there we go and I'm just gonna have the peach color have two I don't know if I'll use both of them on there but I've got different parts I've got I've got all my colors and so I'm gonna say okay and we're gonna let this cut out but we're gonna make sure over here that we change to half cut so that it'll cut the vinyl but not the backing material and while that cuts, I can start prepping the other batch of vinyl, which is the shiny or the glittery, glittery stuff. I can start cutting that out of it while, while we let this cut. So while you're cutting that, Kelly just wants to know, do you put the clear, wait, not put, hey Kelly, do you peel the clear coat off the glitter vinyl before you cut or after? You know what, that's a great question because that is an important part. You want to do it after because right now it's kind of acting like a stabilizer sheet. Mm -hmm. So it's stabilizing the material and making it easier to cut and, and easier to transfer as well. 
Great question, Kelly. Okay, we have one, we have two. And sometimes when I take on a project like this, I'll go ahead and cut a little extra versus what I strictly need because I feel like I'd rather, sometimes I'd rather have that extra here and I can always use it on a future project. Mm -hmm. I love how you always save your little pieces when you were showing, gosh, quite a few episodes ago where you have that little bin with just a few little extra vinyl pieces that you've cut out because you never know when you're working on a project, if it's vinyl, if it's paper, whatever, instead of tossing them, you can use them for something else. Oh, absolutely. There's always something to use it on. And it says it's all done. So before I move anything, I try to go through and look and see and make sure. And I'm trying to see if that my, there it is. I knew it was around here somewhere. <laughs> but I try to look and make sure that whatever I was cutting, I'll say, okay, so there should be a piece right here. But if I'm not quite seeing, so sometimes with the some brands of vinyl and some types of vinyl, um, if you're not seeing the lines clearly or crisply, or if you think it maybe didn't quite properly cut, just leave it be and run it again, especially if it's something quick and easy like this. It's much easier to let it run a second time if you're feeling a little not so confident about being able to see the lines than it is to try try to have to like hand cut and or you know try to or waste the material or tear the material and have to start all the way over. It's a little easier to go ahead and, and let it just cut again. And in this case, I had two materials that I could clearly see and two materials that I couldn't quite see where the or feel where the lines were. And that just made me a little nervous. So it's no harm in that. And the machine can think I'm crazy all at once. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it's almost done. See, yeah, it's almost done. Okay. Yes, and I see Brother Zoe's on here too. So don't forget, if you try one of these techniques or any of the things that you see during the Brother, all these live shows at your site virtually, be sure to tag hashtag Brother Zoe's. Uh, they love to see this. And if you're on Instagram, quite often they share it too. So. Keep that in mind. Give you a little bragging rights on your crafting project. Oh yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna take another look here. And I think my one material is just really, really pale. So I think I'm just not really seeing it because it's so pale and that's okay. Because the, I'm actually surprised this, this holographic looking color is new to me. I just opened it for today. That looks oh, like that. You know what? I can I can see it. It's just fine. I okay. see it. So I peel these off, and then I'm going to put the the glitter now because remember the glitter is thicker, and so we want to make sure that we we just want to make sure that we're using all the same thickness. That's always the case, and it doesn't matter what kind of material, even if you were working with felt or fabric or paper or whatever you don't want to put really thin and really thick together um because it'll go one way or the other depending on what it tests on first okay 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 so now we go back all we're doing i'm not going to remove anything i'm just going back to scan so that hey, we can hey. see where the material is oh okay i was just going to say oh, if you're this gonna got bumped. There, there we go, go. Thanks, Marion. Okay, so now we can see where the lines are. So now what I can do is pull, and I'm gonna do this just for a second, just so I can see where my, to get my, there we go. So now I can see where the stuff is, but I have to, I do have to make sure that I in fact can see so that I don't end up getting in the wrong place. There we go. And I can move over and we only have three colors this time. So I'm just making sure to move over. Oh, you don't want to select. Okay. So if you get a little piece. Let's see if it'll, there we go. If it's being tricky about moving, what you can do is you just go into where it says edit and select that little button and manually move it. 
if it's being tricky. Sometimes the real tiny pieces, the machine isn't quite sure you mean, like it, it'll get confused and think, you really mean this? Yes. So once we've got all that, we are ready to cut again. And it's still half cut because we still don't want the transfer material to cut. Okay. And while it does that, we can get our, out our trusty tool. <laughs> I love this tool because it can help you hook, hook and pull. And you can see that it cuts the vinyl, but not that backing material. Boy, that's nice. It's going to be useful to us. Okay, so there's one. <laughs> and I just it's so funny. It's like watching a little rubber reaction, I'm waiting for it to go whoop, bam. <laughs> and the rule, the golden rule of vinyl is that you're never in a hurry. <laughs> Oops. So I accidentally pushed the pause button. If you ever need to pause it for any reason, you can. If you just push start, it'll just start back where it was. Bonus lesson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, my gosh. This is looking awesome. You picked such great colors, too, May. That's just so good together. Oh, right. Oh, I love I love vinyl. It's There's so many fun colors to be had. So all different pieces. Oh, and now now our other pieces. So now what we can do is scoot this aside so we give ourselves some more room here. So this is the only, and then I don't even think I would call it tedious because we kept our shape simple, but this is the only part that will take a bit of time is this part and I could see from this so I didn't use a big chunk of this and when that happens with vinyl because let's face it vinyl is a little bit pricey I will just cut and save this scrap for another project another time oh this one is a tricky one isn't it so this is a new to me material I always oh and it didn't quite okay so it looks like the reason this material, why I had some issues seeing it, is that it in fact did not quite cut through. And this is a really good example of why I always say, don't get rid of whatever you just cut. Oh, it did, wait a minute. Well, that's funny. I love that though. The shiny on this, I might have to get a piece of that. That might be lucky for fishing lures. <laughs> Put a little oh, I know. on it. That would be perfect. So it looks like, okay. So I think that this is, a, is, I always, whenever I have a brand new to me material, I always kind of give it a little, play with it a little and see what, you know, how I'm feeling about it or what it does, because they can all be different. And it looks like this one just did not quite cut through. It looks like it cut through, but it didn't quite cut through. So what I will do if I'd like to use it, which I think I would, what I will do, and this is why I say don't get rid of your pattern until you've weeded everybody. Because what we can do is go in here to edit. And I'm actually going to go like this and say OK and group delete. So I'm just going to get rid of most of the pieces. And we'll get rid of that one. We'll get rid of that one. And we'll get rid of that one. So, and it does happen. I know, I, I prefer it doesn't happen when we're live, but you know what? I decided to try a new material today, so there we go. 
Um, May, this is great though because there's so many that are watching that are new to maybe new to the scan and cut or maybe purchase some new vinyl and the same thing happened. They're like, oh, is it me? And no, each thing could be a little different. So when you do it live, it's somehow easy it is to fix. It's awesome. And the thing with vinyl is, even though they're all under that category of heat transfer vinyl, you'll mm -hmm. find that different pieces fit together a little differently. You'll find that different pieces cut differently. You'll find that some some types cut very easily and sometimes take multiple cuts. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna scan. And I use this scan feature as much as I can because that way I always know that what I'm trying to cut is in fact in the appropriate place. And some of them just, I think, especially like the holographic colorful like this is. Okay, and then I need to go like this so I can see, see where I am. Let's see. So it looks like. So that's the other thing that I'm noticing is it's very, actually it's so sheer that it's very difficult to see. So I'm actually going to have to count and make sure that I am at least two squares over. Yep, that should work. Okay, so now we can cut this. And if, that, if I have a trickier material, I'll try to cut it all by itself because a lot of times that can help. Okay, but while we wait for it, see, while we always have work to do, while we wait for it, we can do all the other materials. Oh, look at that one cut so well. I love so that. I actually tell people really often, and I'm going to force this to cut twice just because I really want that darn thing to be cut out. <laughs> um, the glitter heat transfer vinyl is the product that I usually tell people if you're new to vinyl, start with the glitter because it's really, it's a really nice material to cut and it is, it cuts really smoothly, but it's also a little thicker. So it's a little easier to handle and work with and not worry about burning or having problems that can happen with some of the more sensitive, like what we're discovering with our other vinyl here. Let's see. Where... Okay, I'm getting nervous there because it's not, if it's, it always happens where if it's one that I think it ought to be pulling something off and nothing's happening, then I get nervous that it didn't cut out. But in this case, I just wasn't there yet. There we go. Okay. And then in this case, so in this material case, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put my tool on the mat and check and see, do we have a cut or not? Oh, and we do. So Yay. if by doing that, by checking it on the mat before I move it, what that does for me is if it was wrong, I could have just hit cut one more time because I didn't move anything. Okay. Well, let's cut around that. All right. There we go. Much nicer. So this I love is... That glitter, you could just stick all of that into a little envelope, May, and mail it my way. I love those little pieces. It's a little more, and so when I compare it to the other stuff, this is a little more rubbery and a little softer. This mm -hmm. is a little harder and more like plastic. So it makes sense why this did not cut the same. Okay, now it's time to bring the mat over and get assembly part. So I actually will find, well, hopefully I will find, let's, let's go digging here. Where did I, <laughs> I have to figure out, there it is. So I will pull <laughs> this back out. And this will, this, I knew you had that there and I saw Cindy earlier saying, how is she going to get that back together? This is how it happens, Cindy. <laughs> yep. So I will look and I can see that, so this is going to be mirror image. Right, so it's going to be the opposite. And what I will do is play with, because now I have extra, right? So I can play with which colors I like and which pieces I think look nice and all of that good stuff. And I can look at 
this is this one, which means it's this one. I know that can be if that if if mirroring it is just too much or too hard. All you have to do if you if I had mirrored it in the scanning cut, we wouldn't be worrying about this at all because it would all be exactly the same. So what I'm doing right now is just making sure I like whatever pieces it is that I have. It looks like, let's see. So it should be that one. No, that's not that one. Oh yes, it should be. No? Hmm. Oh, because I'm wrong. Hello, May. So that's <laughs> gonna be that. I was upside down, that happens. And you can see how it makes it so much easier for me to handle because I have all of the pieces here and because I can move the pieces around, the transfer material really helps. So now we just need this guy. And I see some of your questions rolling in. Don't worry, I'll may I'll take a second at the end and answer those. I'm just going to interrupt oh, your question. Absolutely. absolutely. Okay, so this guy goes like that. So I can do that one or I can have it be peach. I think I'm going to have it be peach. And I know I have extras, but here's the thing. I have a bunch of zipper pouches and a bunch of summer birthdays, so I could easily go ahead and make extra and then just make note of what parts that I have that are extra and go from there. And actually, I could even, if I wanted that piece to be white, I could make that white, but I like two pieces of a peach, so we're gonna go like that. So, now we just figure out in what order we want to glue everybody down. And I'm gonna start with this one. And normally I would tell you to put a little, oh wait, I do have my cloth. Okay, I was gonna say, I'm gonna have to do this the naughty way without a cloth to drop. But this is a, um, I don't know what I was thinking of. I was stuck, Angela, so you'll have to give me some idea of what the heck to do now. I was stuck creatively. And so I just started, I found a bunch of squares pre-cut and I started stitching them together. But now I'm looking at this big, big, like quilt size thing of squares and going, okay, but what was I going to do with that? <laughs> I, was just, I was just needing to get my hands going. So I just started stitching squares together. But there's no, no master no, plan. That's, the world. that's called piecing of some sort. You're doing good, May. <laughs> well, I just did that because I just couldn't come up with a project. And I thought, you know what, we'll just start something and then we'll see what happens from there. So normally you should, though, put a piece of cloth over. And the reason for that is just to make sure that you're not burning the vinyl. And then we'll want to add each piece. And I'm saving this to put this back over because you do not want to directly iron vinyl. Um, it's very, very ugly. It can melt into your vinyl and uh, melt into your iron. Um, it can get, I don't know if you've ever done that, Angela, but it can get very ugly, very quickly. I have not done that, but I can imagine because that, yeah. I have done other things, but also even thinking on sewing on the garment side, if, if anybody's ever pressed on like a rain gear or a vinyl, anything like that, if you don't have an iron shoe on, you will have a hot mess, literally. <laughs> yes. And this, I think it's because of what the materials are and everything. So it gets very ugly, very quickly. So you just want to be careful and mindful. And I usually end up putting some of the transfer material back over um, if I'm concerned that I might be ironing in that area, then that way it goes. And it, you can see this goes really quickly. It doesn't take very long. And sometimes what I will do though, is if there's a little spot that I really just need a little heat in a very specific spot, I will go ahead and very briefly press that iron because you do have the transfer material and theoretically you should be fine. It's just one of those best practices kind of ideas that we just want to be careful about. Everyone's saying that fabric could be your new press cloth and someone else says make a runner out of it. Oh, a runner would be fun too. That's a great one. 
hadn't thought about doing a runner. It's funny that yes, you it's that. kind of big. Right now, I think it's four by five. So it's a little big for my new press cloth, but it's one of those things where I just got going and I thought, okay, well, let's just get going. And like I said before, if something like this where the, these canvas zipper bags, they accept vinyl really nicely and quickly. Some materials take a little more pressing. So if I know I'm not gonna have to overheat things to get it to work, um, I might be a little more inclined to go ahead and you know, break the rules just a tiny bit. Now this one, I'm not sure how this is gonna do. We are gonna find out. Um, so actually, I'm not putting the press cloth on this one because I really just wanna see what it does and I wanna keep an eye on it. And it appears, at least to my eye, it's going, it's becoming translucent very quickly, which I'm guessing means that it's transferring, but I'm not sure. And if this does not transfer nicely, I can always pull out, I can always pull out a different piece. So that's the other thing with a pieced item like this, you can always pull out, ooh, well, it may have been a little tricky to cut, but look how nicely that went on. Oh, I love that. Nice, okay. It's like, no, don't send me away, keep me around. And then I'm thinking, a heart and then if you were wondering well why did you have extra hearts well number one i'm i'm a happy kind of a crafter so hearts and stars and things being around is never a problem <laughs> not that ever. so good may isn't this fun and then we can just take i'm just going to take an extra piece of transfer material over the top and my and that's the other thing about the transfer material guys is look i can move this around and it stay, it's not permanent, but it holds, that transfer material is sticky. So it holds your stuff in place so that you don't have to worry about getting all of your pieces aligned just right. And what if, you know, what if this is just slightly wrong or anything like that? It will all, it'll all shake out and work out. So now let's see. There we go. Oh, super cute. Isn't that fun? And we could, at this point, if we wanted to, we could add like hand stitching or we could add more designs. We could add a word on top and you can take it any direction you want, but it all goes back to, you know, I have an idea, but I don't have the technical know-how <laughs> to make what I'm envisioning. So we just use our paper and we just use our scan and cut to get that done. Oh, that is so cute, May. I love Isn't that. Isn't that fun? Yeah. I could think of so many different applications for that. And I see everybody writing, I've got ideas for this. I love this. Marcia says, Yay, oh, I'm please. so excited. When I, I actually had a totally different, like, let's get ready for summer project idea in mind for us today. But then last week when I started to play with this, I went, oh, no, I, we need to share this with everybody right away. <laughs> Absolutely. Very cute idea. I could think of so many applications for that. In fact, I wish I would have known that before Mother's Day. Her card would have been so cute because I would have made it into a little bag instead of just a card. Yes, you can absolutely do this on cards. Um, you can do that. And it doesn't have to be heat transfer vinyl either. You could make whatever material you wanted. But it's a fun way to take either a basic or a not so basic pattern and create it into something that's really custom for you. Mm -hmm. Love that. Everybody's saying, thanks, thanks. Now I saw a couple questions come in here. So May, do you sure. mind if I go back up to a couple of those? Absolutely. All right, let's see everybody. And don't forget if you try this, don't forget to use hashtag brother sews. I mentioned it earlier and I saw a few of you roll in a little bit late and don't forget if you're on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, you'll never miss one of the live shows. And if you're on Facebook, share it to your page and you can go back and rewatch as many times as you want. And it's easy to find if it's on your page. All right, so let's see. Oh, Marsha wants to know if you ever use Teflon cloth when you're doing the pressing. You know what, I don't have one of those. I have used it, it works good. Teflon cloth, I've also used, when I was in a desperate situation and I was someplace where I didn't have a pressing cloth. Pressing cloth is usually my favorite go to it's safe um i've used wax paper believe it or not and that was a really good buffer too well and really like i was saying the the transfer sheet itself is designed to be a sort of a pressing cloth 
So theoretically, depending on what, like the, with the glitter vinyl, I've never had a problem at all. The glitter heat transfer vinyl, it's so kind. It's always nice to me. But some of the more specialty or some of them that are like for sports that are really, really thin and really, really finicky. Some of them, it's really important to make sure that you have your cloth. So, I mean, it can even be a good idea to cut like a little tiny piece off of them and do tests and make sure you know how sensitive they are or how much time they take before you really get into your project. That's a good idea. That's a really good idea. Um, Oh, Marsha was ask, asking, can you take the mat out? I think we already did this because you, when the one that didn't cut, it said, can you take the mat out and line it up perfectly again when you put it back in again? And I think you showed that really clear that if you don't move the paper or the vinyl off of the mat before you recut, you're fine. Otherwise, you have to scan it in again. You do. I really do think that you absolutely have to leave whatever the material is on the mat. You can take the, the whole mat out, but you have to. And I usually put my hand down if I'm trying to test or check put my hand on to make sure it's, it can't, the whole piece can't move because even, I mean, even a millimeter matters if you're looking to recut. So you really just need to make sure there's absolutely no chance that it can move even a millimeter. There you go. And Anne wants to know, is the paperback vinyl as good for, as good for this project? So I don't know what paperback vinyl is. I don't think. I was just, that's what I was just trying to think as I'm reading it. I'm not sure what paperback vinyl. Yeah, and if you're a little more specific, we could probably answer that. Yeah, so this stuff is all heat transfer. There's vinyl that works that just has a sticker that you don't transfer. So it doesn't stick to fabric, it sticks to more hard surfaces. It could stick to paper or plastic or that kind of thing. So with those, with those kind of like sticker type vinyls, yes, this would work exactly the same. And in fact, you wouldn't need to it wouldn't be a mirror image because this, with the sticker type, you cut with the sticker on top. So it would be exactly the same, however you made it. Um, it would work, I mean, it would work with fabric. It would work with paper. You could do whatever you wanted with this kind of an idea. Excellent. All right, let's see. Can, can all of the kits, oh, this is a big one, Louise. I don't, <laughs> I need my glass. <laughs> I gotta need my glasses for this. Lois, I'm sorry. Can all the kits that were made for the older scan and cuts be used on the DX models? Some of these are technical questions that you might wanna call your brother dealer for, but she's looking for the stamp kit and I don't see it. Oh gosh. Hmm. Okay, so I can't, I, I haven't actually cut. So the stamp kit was like a silicone material that you could make um, like cling stamps and cut the silicone material and then you make a cling stamp and you could stamp with like paint and stuff and stamp on things. Um, you don't necessarily with that. So I, with the kit or without a kit, you can cut those materials with the DX. So yes, you can make stamps. You could make, you can cut um, all kinds of different stuff. I use the rhinestone kit on my DX and that's an older, um, kit. I think overall, though, I think the answer is probably because most of the things, you know, they, they've they come along. Um, and a lot of the things, like she specifically mentions the stamp, you can cut that material with the DX, yes, and you, you whether or not you use the items that came with it or not shouldn't matter. But I would definitely reach out to Brother if it's not working or if you're having a problem with, like, some of these things you register on your Canvas account to a specific machine. So I would definitely talk to them if you're having any issues with any of that. Definitely. And Cindy, I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking adhesive vinyl, but we're using this other vinyl, the heat transfer vinyl. So I think you're probably right because the adhesive vinyl does have the paper backing. So, the, But that's not the heat transfer. But of course, you could do this on that as well. Yes, absolutely. You could do it on paper. You could do it and make it a card. Like May said, you could do this on a lot of things. I love the way you can design your own, though. And the way you yes, and this would be fun as a fabric applique. This would be really fun. There's a lot uh, of things you could do. I totally agree. Totally agree. Okay, I think that's um, I think that's. Oh, Marsha has a quick question. I think this is a dealer question. But let me see. Uh, I can order the new vinyl blade kit with Disney and use it on a machine that does not have Disney. Correct. Yep. Yep. But just make sure when you contact your brother dealer, let them know what which model you do have to make sure it does work on there. 
All right, I think that's good. So May, this is super fun. And don't forget everyone, if you share these photos on Instagram or anywhere, use hashtag brother sews. They love to see your projects. I have a feeling we're gonna be seeing a lot of this. I could see you were doing working on your little quilt project there, piecing things together, by the way. You had a few comments of some people, what they said, using it as a runner, a quilt back, things like that. But you know, May, what I have been doing is piecing fabrics together and creating, think of it as just your piece of fabric that you're going to use to cut your next project out. Oh, that's really fun. It doesn't have to be the exact dimensions. It could be something else. <laughs> Everybody's saying, thank you, thank you. Oh, yeah. Oh, Terry, what a great idea for all the makeup bags. And my sister's birthdays are coming up in June. Perfect timing. They're going to love that. And if they're watching, they're going to know where it came from. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Anne says, yes, it's, I have a lot of paper backed vinyl. <laughs> awesome. May, any, anything else you're working on right now that you want to share with everyone? Or are you just enjoying? I'm just, the uh, just the usual. I'm always on Facebook and Instagram at Craft With May sharing new tutorials and ideas and all kinds of fun stuff. And I think I'm going to add a little stitching to this one. So I'll post a picture of it after I add some stitching. Just awesome. because I always I have so much fun with these bags and adding little details or little little maybe some I'll stitch in some little sequins or something. It's always just so much fun. Excellent. I totally agree. I can't wait to see it. So for those of you that don't know, I put her Instagram above here. Mine is there as well, and so is brother. So be sure to tag us or um, at least mention us in your when you're posting these photos. We love to see what you're doing. So this week, by the way, you've May now, you've Cindy Hogan this afternoon at 4:30 on her software shut in tomorrow at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. I'm on working on my Chloe trench. In fact, I've been cutting out a couple different samples. May, I could, I would love to do something like you're doing there on this jacket. I might have to come up with something creative for the back lapel or something. I don't know. Ooh. I'll tag you if I do that. <laughs> Please do. Yes. And then on Thursday, we have two brother uh, educators, and they're going to be showing the list is long about the digital dual move it, the digital <laughs> dual move it foot. I always get that mixed up in my head. <laughs> the foot that I love for quilting. So you won't want to miss that. And that's at noon on Thursday. I think the only other thing I missed was three o'clock with Emily. And that's tomorrow. Those are all Eastern Standard Times. And then don't forget about May's YouTube channel because she has a ton of tutorials. And I saw some newbies rolling in. Welcome to the show. And someone was asking how to scan, things like that. Head over to May's YouTube page and be sure to watch some of her videos and you can also go back on the Brother Sews pages and watch these because May, you've showed this many, many times. You have a ton of episodes on here that were oh, just yes. fantastic. So awesome. Everybody says, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, May, I can hardly wait till next month. Yes, we'll see you guys soon. Sounds good. And if you have questions, don't forget, you can always ask either of us. We try to help in any way. Brother, thanks for letting us take over your page. Have a great day.